All right, we're a couple days late on this one, but uh, listen, this is my team, and I want it to be unequivocally clear. I'm not ducking this year, Car. I know there's been allegations in the past of certain people associated with the Michigan basketball program occasionally ducking something from time to time. It won't be me. It will not be me this season. Uh, Michigan finally got dog walked by Texas Tech. That is the the phrase I would use. And you've heard me come on this program after all six of their first games this season, four wins and two losses. And I've looked you in the eyes and I've said, yeah, but at least it was fun. Even after their losses, this one wasn't fun. There was nothing fun about this one. Texas Tech just did the whole Texas Tech thing where they sucked the life out of you for 40 minutes and Michigan had no answers, even though, once again, I thought Olivia Cowell and Doug McDaniel were okay to good in this game. Uh, nobody else gave them much of an answer. Namari Burnett really struggled in this game, one for 10 from the floor. Your thoughts? Uh, Namari Burnett, a little PTSD from, his, from, his, from the nastiness that occurred at Texas Tech? maybe maybe Mm. maybe uh once again i don't know i i think i would chalk this up as because you said that the long beach state loss wasn't necessarily bad right like you said like long beach state hooped like they won the game like y'all went y'all went hoop for hoop and they just out hooped y'all at the end yeah we i mean michigan left the door open for a team to hoop but yes they hooped this is the game for me where I'm like, this is bad. Like, this is bad. Thought y'all, like, I thought y'all got, got y'all ass whooped straight up. Yeah. yeah like, it, it, it's it's just bad. Like, I, yes, you did get, you know, Olivier 16 and five, which once again, I don't know if we want to circle back on this, but like, <laughs> Olivier and Conway should be a first team All American because I think he rolled out of bed and got six, 16 and five. Um, just throwing that out there. I know you mentioned that on a, an episode or two ago. Uh, Doug McDaniel, light game for him with 12-3-3. Three and three. I mean, Texas Tech just really came out hot out the gates. They suffocated y'all right away. Um, and like you pointed out in some other episodes, you don't have the depth for guys like Namari Burnett to have two points in a game. Like, you're not going to win any basketball game where he gives you two points. That's just not going to happen. Or you're not going to win a game where you get four points from Terrace either. So you need other guys to step up. Um, also, other guys can play better, but like, this is a, I don't know what the phrase would be to use, like a black eye loss, just because like this is the first bad one in my eyes. Yeah, it was really bad. So um, bad time for a Namari Burnett stinker after I said Purdue would rather have Namari Burnett than Lance Jones. I still they, stand they, by they, that. They, right? that's, that's still the correct take. Yeah, I, I still stand by that for the record because Namari Burnett's struggles tonight weren't him like jacking long twos with 27 seconds on the shot clock and missing them. This was just like he was missing good looks. He had a lot at the rim that he missed. Um Yeah, Michigan, I mean, I've basically said it. I think they're a two-man team with five good starters, right? That's been that's been my thing. They have five good players and two stars. Tonight they had two good players, and it was the two stars. So they're going to lose more often than not when Namari Burnett gives you two points, Terrace Reed gives you four points in 17 minutes and four fouls. Like you you can't have those guys no show because if those guys no show, then you're turning to the bench. And you're getting Yusuf Kayat minutes. We got seven Yusuf Kayat minutes in this game. He's just not ready. I don't know if he ever will be ready. He hit a three, one of two from three in this game, but that's all he can do. He's constantly clueless on the defensive end. Um, it, it it just is the thing. Like Michigan has no depth. They got to play their starters, and their starters have to play good. I will say this. This is probably just an excuse, but I also think there's some some accuracy in it. When you don't have depth, Texas Techs are really difficult team to play for your third game in three days we should have seen this coming ahead of time when we did the preview i definitely downplayed it although i did i remember saying clearly on the preview like this game could go wildly in different either michigan like can just score on these guys and then i think they're better or they're not gonna be able to score and it's gonna get ugly that was the preview and they couldn't score and it got ugly like it it was on paper pretty clear that texas tech if they can consistently get their stop you don't want to see that team when you're already gassed and you need 39 minutes from five guys. True, but also when we lined up the teams, and this is not how it is. Obviously, you know how college basketball goes. You're picking the five best players. Like, you're at every position outside of Pop Isaacs in my eyes. Like, I want a Michigan player. And if you go down, like, what happened, 
Um, I didn't think necessarily this reflected in the game as much, but then like after the game, I look at the box score, uh, Joe Toussaint, 17 points, four rebounds, four assists. He won his matchup. Devin Cambridge won his matchup. Pop Isaacs and Doug McDaniel, probably a wash, but you know, what which way you want to lean. Uh Darian Williams won his matchup. Like it's just I think a lot of the Texas Tech guys just won their matchup. And I didn't see that I didn't foresee that happening in this game. I thought that the Michigan guys uh head to head if I'm picking are more talented. But like you said, fatigue might have paid played a little bit of a factor into it, especially because Texas Tech is so physical. And, you know, also I think that Memphis is a pretty physical team as well. So it's a it's a it's a game of kind of you're taking beatings, I guess one would say. So uh still uh I st- still that's a game I expect Michigan to win because I thought they were they were better than this now I still think they are you know I'm not wavering on my I think Michigan is still a good team take but uh some of this stuff is starting to sour me a little bit there needs I need I need a little bit of a little morsel of something good after this after losing like this you know Next three games are critical. I said you would feel so much better about Michigan if they're sitting there at five and two, two and one in Atlantis. Instead, you're four and three, one and two in Atlantis. Um, you, you got Oregon on the road. You got Indiana at home. You got Iowa on the road. You need to go two and one in that stretch of three. You have to steal one of the road games. These are not unwinnable road games, but you you simply have to protect home court and steal one of those in order to feel like you've taken a step forward from last year when you were like a 500 team midway through December. It can't happen again. You can't be seeing ghosts. Uh, I have one more thing from the game, then I have two broader things I want to get to quickly on Michigan, if you will so allow me. Will you entertain me on these three things, please? I know I'm, I'm taking a lot of time on them. my will. I will, I, will, I will always entertain you. Pause. Michigan had eight turnovers in this game. Texas Tech had uh, five for 21 from three. That's what they shot, 23% as a team. If you would have told me those two numbers before the game, Michigan only turned it over eight times, and they were five for 21 from three, Texas Tech was, I would have said Michigan wins this game comfortably. I think that's terrifying that those two things happened and Michigan still lost by 16 points. That is that is a really, really scary thing. If you're like itemizing the list from this game – that's mm-hmm. a horrifying result for the actual caliber of this team. Do, do you happen to have already up what they shot from the field? Had Texas to be good. Tech right? or Michigan? Yeah. Texas Tech. 43% from the field. Okay. Man. It wasn't great. They So they ate at the free throw line. They were 18 for 21 from the free throw line. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. But yeah, just, just not great. Not good. And I, you know, I thought turnovers would be a problem. Like that would be how it snowballs. They really weren't. It wasn't that Michigan just got like soundly beaten in this game, even though they were kind of doing some of the right things. That's scary. Uh, Two broader things for me. Did you see the Juwan Howard incident? I did. I did. Do you have any thoughts on this before I give my very pointed thoughts on this? I think it's, I think it's an awful, absolutely awful look. It's an awful, it's an awful look. You can't, and you can't do it. It's, We, I hate bringing this up, but like you go back to the incident before it always came back to as we we, honestly use it with a lot of coaches. We talk about all these incidents as the leader of young men, as the coach of the University of Michigan basketball team, or not really not the coach right now, but like he is the coach of the University of Michigan basketball team. You can't do that. Like there's a certain standard, there's a certain way you have to act and you proceed to one comeback, which he should, like, I get that. But also at the same time, like, him coming back could be viewed as a distraction if you're not actually going to be the head coach. And then you make it unequivocally clear that you're a distraction by getting ejected from the game. So it's like, it's just, it's awful. It's just, it's a, you can't do it. Yes. Agreed. Here is where I am at with this. I have some very pointed, pointed thoughts that I will get to in a moment. But before I get to the pointed thoughts, I would like to preface it with this. The sequence that Juwan was upset with was a ridiculous sequence. Like, if you watch what actually happened in the game that led to this moment where Juwan Howard was kicked out of the gym, it was horrible sequence from the officials. Like, it it warranted yelling and complaining from the Michigan staff. Whether that was Juwan or Phil Martelli, uh, there was, like, a goal 10 call that was a phantom call. There was the ball awarded back to Texas Tech for no reason. There was like a guy hanging on the rim that they didn't address. Just all in all, like they botched three straight calls in Texas Tech's favor in a 30-second span. 
And the Michigan coaches had a right to be upset with that. Mm -hmm. I thought that based on the, the visuals I saw through my television screen, people in the gym might be able to tell you different, but all the footage that I saw of this, I think it was an incredibly quick ejection. Like I don't, it, it's like the the whole handshake line, other Juwan Howard incidents that we have seen, he has earned. And I've been like, oh yeah, you have to throw him out. That's a horrible look. I don't think he did anything crazy here. Like I, I think this was like a reputation. I'm throwing you out from the official. And I guess Juwan has to deal with that. I guess he's earned that. I also think it's complete bullshit. I think like how, if Fran McCaffrey does this, is he getting thrown out? Hell no. Like absolutely yeah, well, not. Well, well, do you also think that part of it is that he wasn't like, as a as a as a coach, you do get a certain amount of leeway, and all referees are different as well too. Like, I, which is why, let's let's not lose sight of this. We hate stripes. I'm not on stripes size. I'm in Juwan. I'm on Juwan's side in this. No matter what, I'll never be with stripes. But him not being the actual coach might have actually played a factor. In him like they're not usually the assistants aren't allowed to do any of the talking or anything like that. It's the coach can talk to you. And I know actually some referees actually make that pretty clear before the game. Like I will talk to the coach, but you need to tell the bench, the assistants can't say anything and players can't say anything. Only people that can talk is the head coach. So I don't know if that played a factor or not, but you know, I will say that some of the calls are questionable, but it, that's, that's every game. You're going to have games where calls are questionable and it's about how you handle it. And he he in that situation did not handle it correctly in my eyes. You can't get yeah. ejected right there. That's fine. Again, I if he was the acting head coach, I don't think he did anything to get ejected right there. We obviously mm -hmm. don't know what was said. The elephant in the room here is he's not the head coach. So here's my very point. Let me speak directly to Juwan Howard and hope maybe Jace, who follows us and is like a friend of the show. I love Jace Howard. Maybe Jace will show this to Pops for me. Pops, Jawan Howard, hi, hello, fan of you, fan of your program, fan of Michigan basketball. Hope you're feeling great. Hope you get healthy. Your health should be your number one priority, 1A. It is the number one most important thing in your life to care about way more than it is this basketball team. If you are not healthy, if you are not ready to be a head coach, don't be on our bench. It was a disaster. I'm sorry. Watching this through a television screen was a joke. Having Phil Martelli stand at one end of the bench way over here, being the acting head coach while you also stood up and pretended you weren't the head coach, even though you were the head coach, it's a disaster. We don't want two quarterbacks at once. We don't want two head coaches at once. We want a head coach. This team was good with Phil Martelli. I think it will be good with you. But come back when you're ready to come back. Stop trying to like dip your foot halfway in and do both. It's ridiculous. It's unprecedented. Nobody's ever done it. That's for good reason. So that alone warrants you getting thrown out of the game in this spot. Like, and if you can't see that, you're just becoming a massive distraction to this program in all the wrong ways for the now third consecutive season. Like, I'm just, I'm just tired of it. So again. I, I interpret what happened here generously on your behalf, Juwan. I think that you didn't do anything that crossed the line that deserved getting thrown out. But don't be there unless you're ready to head coach. If you're ready in Oregon, whatever their arena is, the one with the woods painted on, if you're ready to go be our head coach, be our head coach. Be on the sideline. If you're not, be in your living room. Wouldn't be the first time a Michigan sports team has gone and won a game without their head coach on the sideline. So, like, let's just slow down. Take your time. Be healthy. Stop getting ejected. Stop, for the love of God, stop getting ejected in games you're not coaching. Thank you. I will cede my time. I don't know if I got anything to follow up. I think that about wraps it up for me. I have one more broad point on this team. This is me speaking on behalf of Michigan basketball fans everywhere. We're getting frustrated. We're getting frustrated for one very specific reason. The results of this season could be exactly the same. They could be four and three losses to Long Beach State, Memphis, Texas Tech wins against the other four teams. If they were good defensively and had a cohesive plan and looked like they were trying and looked like they were executing a scheme that the coaches had a clear idea of how to win with, it was the offense that sucked. If that's what was going on here, 
I could have lived with that very easily, right? Like I could, that makes sense to me. Olivier Kahn was a good defender. Damari Burnett's a good defender. Terrace Reed's a good defender. All makes sense. If that's how, like the results don't matter to me as much as the fact that this team is so incompetent defensively and I'm point, I'm ready to point fingers. I don't know what the hell this coaching staff's doing. They clearly do not have an ability to coach guys that have been good defenders at other programs into being a good defense. It's it's disaster level right now. Doug McDaniel should not be this good offensively, and you're still having the results that you're having. And I I just feel super frustrated with it because I think they're wasting this. Like, if, if Doug and Conwell weren't so good offensively, this team would be horrible because there, there's just no ability from the staff to hold guys accountable, to get free throw box outs, to get any sort of communication going from these players. It's a disaster, and it's a disaster that shouldn't happen. This team should be better defensively than they are based on the personnel they have, and now this is two consecutive years that I just don't think the Michigan coaches are getting anything from their defense, and they should be. I think it's worth noting that a lot of last year was like, oh, it's his son. That's why I like the effort issues. Now it's like, okay, is it the son, or is it just like you know the whole staff and how they teach and how they preach and how they – maybe make defense and effort type things. No, like it's something that definitely keep in the back of your mind. Um, and just so we're clear there, there, there'll be no Chuck McDaniel on this episode. Correct? No, no. Okay. Yeah. That, that's tragic. That's tragic, but it's, but it's, it's warranted. Okay. Well, you just, you needed to get that in. You needed it to be verbally said that we're not Chug McDanieling. Yeah. Is it Chug McDanieling or is it chugging McDaniel? It's definitely not chugging McDaniel. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. You sure you don't want to chug McDaniel? Uh, okay. Uh, we'll be back with uh, the Michigan-Oregon preview coming up. And I don't know how many days, but I just want to end this. You're going to be with me in person when they play Oregon. Maybe a little in-person show? Ooh. Do they play Saturday? I'll scoot over right here. You can sit right here, big fella. We can boom. There we go. Thank you, for saying I, thank you for saying I fit right there. I thought that was a great opportunity for you to make a fat joke. Thank you.